Mesquite Barbecue in Austin, Texas. Two chopped beefs. Gracias. Owner Tom Davis has been making his favorites since 88. Beef plate, potato salad, bean. Their barbecue is the best in town. From brisket and ribs. The ribs are really tasty. To scratch-made jambalaya. This is Texas jambalaya. All kinds of sandwiches. Catfish poor boy. And even this Texas favorite. Chicken fried steak. Big here? Very big here. Start out with eggs. And how long have you guys been making this? Uh, 20 years. Really? 20 years. All right, milk. Whole milk only, please. OK, so this is it. Eggs are whisked. All right, we got your self-rising flour, seasoned pepper. So it's salt, sugar, pepper, and then red, yellow, and green bell peppers that are dried. It's a sweet black pepper is what I call it. I love this bell pepper thing in here. That's that is. wonderful. And it adds a little bit to it. Ranch, rye, dressed mix. Once you get it all nice and mixed up, it's all this. Wow, that's a lot of seasoning. How do you go flour, blah, blah, blah? I go milk. So you don't put the flour on first. I come from the school, if you put the flour on it first, it helps the egg wash stick to the flour. Everybody says that. Yeah, I mean, who cares about those culinary procedures and processes? <laughs> and I get yelled at every time I do it, I probably do it backwards. We double dip all our chicken fried steaks. So it's got to have a thick batter on it. According to my employer. Oh, so sorry, so sorry. You know what? <laughs> I'm definitely something. This from here. Throw another basket on top? Yep, because it will float for about three minutes. She's ready. Check, 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 check. Get away. You know, shake, shake, shake me into ER. Very hot. That close switch us. And smear all kinds of gravy on it. You can gut it with a fork, so you gotta know you got some tender factor there. Mm. So I like it. I think I pick up that ranch dressing in there a little bit. That's probably the crunchiest or the biggest batter I found on it's, one. I love it. I love it. It's half gone. I've been I'll be to, over here. I've been down to take wings out of people's hands. No, I could take it down. Oh, heaven. That is some thick batter on that, huh? Yeah, it's very good. Uh, Thanks, sir. Definitely excellent, excellent food. It's an awesome place. This is barbecue, and I love barbecue. Love the green mesquite. All right. Great service, great food. There's one thing that I think we're pretty sure on. Uh -oh. You have a love affair with food. I love you, it. You love coming to work. I love coming to work. This is not even work, is it? No, it's this fine. It's, it's home. This is a made-for-culinary-TV movie. Hotel restaurant vet, been cooking since he was 13 years old, returns to San Antonio, Texas to open the mega breakfast and lunch joint, serving over 20,000 scratch meals a month. This is Magnolia Pancake House. Corn beef hash. Robert, what are we into? We're gonna make some brine for corned beef. Oh. We start with some cold water, kosher salt, brown sugar, cure number one. A little pig salt. Helps preserve it, helps give it a little color. Cinnamon stick, mustard seed, black peppercorn, juniper, ginger, whole clove, allspice, allspice berries, bay leaf, garlic clove, celery, carrot, mirepoix, and onion. Now, how long is this going to simmer? 10 minutes. The big monster brisket. Certified black Angus brisket. This is riddled with tremendous flavor because of the integration of the fat. The brine's done. Now we're going to shock the brine. Mm, you know what this is. This is the punch bowl at the Flavortown High School prom. We'll add our brisket to the brine, fat side up. And how long are we gonna brine this? Week? Uh, 14 days. Whoa! This super savory brine, locked in for 14 days. Yep. Out of bounds. Okay, so we've got one of these that's been brined. Look at that. We're going with an onion. And another onion. Pickling spice. And then some whole clove garlic. About a gallon of water. Oil on top. Oven. 350, four hours. So now we're all done. Oh, look at that. Oh. I've chased this flavor profile my whole cooking career. Mm. Oh. Oh. We'll cool it down in the refrigerator overnight so it reabsorbs those juices. The brisket's cooled and chopped up. Now it goes to the buffalo chopper? Correct. Now we take the uh, garlic and the onions, and we put them in the robocoop with raw onions, pepper, salt, and garlic, and we make a puree. We've got the puree, the brisket, and the potatoes. Now it comes together. This is the beginning of righteous hash. Start with some potatoes. Add our garlic onion puree. And then now, ridiculous amounts of corned beef. It's mixed together. We go on flat top or saute pan? Saute pan. You gonna do the flip? I'll do the flip. Ooh, that's crispy. Hash and your favorite thing. Chicken in the pool. Doing the backstroke. Mmm. There's an orchestra of flavor. It is the way it's supposed to be done. It's been this lifelong quest for me. So here we are in Georgetown, about 30 miles north of Austin, to check out Monument Cafe. And he's been mixing farm fresh flavors with a taste of Texas since opening this joint in 95. Got the King Ranch casserole. 
There's chicken and there's cheese and the pepper. It's really a Texas thing. So let me get this straight. Where does King Ranch sauce come from? To feed the ranch hands down at the King Ranch, South Texas, they used to make this. OK, start with some oil. Got our onions, bell pepper, and a little bit of celery. Cook that down. Okay. Garlic, sliced mushrooms. And down we deglaze it a little bit with some white wine. A little salt, black pepper, comino. Down here, the comino is cumin. That's what you're calling cumin? Yeah, comino. 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 A little chili powder. A little Rotel tomatoes and green chilies. <laughs> so we've got canned tomatoes with some, like, a hatch green chili. Smells like Mexican food. Flour in. If you have fat, that's when it starts to work together and build the roux. So where'd the fat come from? The fat came from one we started with oil. All right. Now he'll slowly add in a little chicken, chicken stock. Chicken stock. And finish off with some whole milk. There, so you just sit there and let this reduce a little bit. How long you reduce that? Maybe five, six minutes. And then it's going to settle and... Yep, tighten it right up. Discus. Yep. And then we get to eat. That's the best part. And race the cars. That'll be later. Blow them doors <laughs> completely off. Smell the toast. <laughs> So now we're about ready to assemble the casserole and put it in the oven. I don't know the word casserole exactly works. Enchilada stack or something? Cachalada. Guess mm. Looks like a bit of an enchilada. I know. I like cachalada. I'm going to change it. Okay. I'll go and get the Sharpie and change all the menus by <laughs> this afternoon. Okay, so hit it. Ladle the sauce down. So the tortillas don't stick and don't dry out. Exactly. And whose recipe was this? Uh, everyone in Texas has a different recipe. Local. This is a staple? Yeah. Did you grow up on it? No, no, my mom was not a good cook. Sorry, mom, you know you weren't. <laughs> Pulled chicken. Dark and white. Yep. Grated Monterey Jack and cheddar cheese. More sauce. Thanks for using dark meat. More flavorful? Oh, yeah. It's got the most flavor. It's got the most fat. OK, so three layers of it. This is the last one. Yep. Is there going to be any cheese on top of it? Yep. We'll just serve that half to Matthew and then that half to me. Sounds good. Into the oven, man. All right. And then how long will it bake off? Uh, about 45 minutes, 350 degree oven. Not covered? Not covered. Here's our King Ranch casserole serving with pinto beans and roasted root vegetables. I like the corner. You just jumped right in and took the corner. You got three more. Yeah, there's three. <laughs> <laughs> so those green chilies that come through creamy, not spicy, which gets misinterpreted a lot of times when we talk about Tex Mex food. Mm hmm. Just like Matthew was saying. Having that dark meat, I think you did the right balance. No, real good consistency, man. Not too wet, not too dry. Shovel down a plate full of that? Easily. A good smile. Cachalada. Cachalada. That's like Texas comfort Texas food. Texas comfort food. So I'm here in El Paso, Texas. I'm in a strip mall, and I'm looking for, wait for it, barbecue. Now, no, wait, 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 listen, listen. I felt the exact same way. I mean, El Paso, Texas, real deal, barbecue, strip mall. You gotta be kidding me. Until I heard about this dude, he's got a big monster smoker that's a stick burner. I mean, no gas assist. It's real deal. This is Desert Oak Barbecue. Pull these briskets. Everything I have ever tried on this menu is awesome. Run them in. So there's a lot of great food in this town. Mm -hmm. Is there a lot of barbecue? Not really. It's the only barbecue that I consider barbecue. What's different about here is the way they smoke it. Which is a trick that owners Rich Funk and his wife Suzanne have borrowed from another part of the Lone Star State. It's a Central Texas style barbecue, which they use oak. This is a stick burner barbecue. Yeah. So you're back there and you got to keep this thing rolling. We cook day and night. And the specialty of the house is? El Paso stuffed potato. Here you go, El Paso potato with brisket. Stuffed baked potato is powerful, you know? Uh, you, you get that baked potato and cheese and beans, and you have beautiful, moist brisket. It'll definitely fill you up. What are we making first? Jalapenos torreados, and we're going to top the El Paso stuffed potato with them. Roast the jalapenos. No oil, no nada. Lime juice, soy sauce. And the onions. Marinate overnight. What's our next step? We're going to prepare the potato. We wrap it in foil, throw it in the smoker. How long does it take to cook? About four hours. I can put on there what type of meat I want? Yeah. I want to see what the brisket's all about. Big old fat brisket right here. We're going to trim it. And we need a perfect shape. And where did you learn this crazy technique? It was a lot of trial and error. You've been on trial a lot? <laughs> now, salt and pepper city. This is ready to go on the smoker. 18 hours, between 250 and 275. Make it happen, Captain. All right, let's make a potato. I'm going to roll it, soften it up. Beat it up is more like it. You know, it's just a garnish at this point. Some butter, salt, pepper, cheese, sour cream, some chives, and some brisket. That's a quarter pound right there. Some beans and our jalapeno. 
Anybody ever eat the whole thing? Yeah. What football team do you play for? <laughs> There's a lot more going on in this than what most people would call the average stuffed baked potato. Oh, Toriato is one of my new favorite things. One thing I like on your brisket, it's not overly smoky, nicely seasoned, good bark, beans are delicious. The whole thing is a package deal, man, besides the fact that it's not a human size. It's like four human sizes. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Jesse, do your thing. When I'm hungry, I definitely get the stuffed potato. Great flavors, great zest to it. The brisket is just consistently moist in the middle. Incredible. You've had good barbecue. Yeah. In a strip mall, this used to be a food truck, actually. No, this is a strip mall, buddy. You can't <laughs> tell me it was a food truck. I can tell there's no wheels on this. Quarter pound of brisket. Desert Oak has definitely the best barbecue here in El Paso. Just a delectable delight. You're the real deal. Everything that you're doing, you're doing really mindfully. And that is what it takes to be great at barbecue. Nice job. Thank you. Firehouse burger. It will set your mouth on fire. Because it's loaded with a three pepper hot sauce. Looks like mustard, but it's not. I'm actually nervous at this point. OK, we're going to make some firehouse sauce for you. Vinegar. Add serrano, jalapenos, or habaneros. OK. Mm -hmm. Did I see habanero plants in the you back? You saw habaneros in the back. We grow our own because we want to make sure they're good and hot. Go back there and pick out the prime pick ones. Pick out the ones we want and throw it in that little old pot. They just cook till they're soft. These are done. Mm. Mm -hmm. No gloves or anything with that, Edie. Absolutely not. We're just kind of blending these things up. There is no way that that is not going to be a million degrees. Along with that goes garlic, onions, radishes. You're just going to love it. That is going to kill my mouth. There we go. Then we're going to pour this in here, add some mustard. mustard. Whose recipe is this? We really don't know where this is. Someone came said, up. I want something spicy. I Edie something. came back here and went, ha, mm -hmm. ha, ha. And that. Part of me right now is dying to just take a taste of it. And the other part of me is just praying that the bun and the burger and all the apparatus will cool it down enough. We'll cool it down. So yeah. now we're going to put this on the burger? Yes, we are. We're cooking the burger for the firehouse. So this burger is going to go salt and pepper. What else goes on this burger? Uh, our, we have our cayenne butter. We're going to melt a little butter. Uh -huh. Cayenne pepper. And let's see. Okey-doke. Quit looking at me and add more. I just want to see if you're going to be able to handle this. Okay. Oh, that butter's going to go right on top of this patty. Ooh, maybe a little bit more. Some American cheese. Wonderful mustard sauce. A little bit more, a little bit more. Jalapenos, lettuce. See how quick she covered it up with the lettuce? Not I did. There. I don't want you to see it. Onions, tomatoes, pickles. And there it is. This is kind of like licking the volcano in Flavortown. Mmm. Oh, that is hot. That is really good. Oh, gosh. Nice hot, and you still get flavor. My mouth is like literally on fire at this point. If I just keep eating, it'll cool up for like 20 seconds. Oh, my tongue's completely numb now. I almost bit it off. I bet you that's flammable. You could take that sauce and put that on raw chicken. It would cook it. <laughs> you know what? I dig that. Spices that they use, amazing. I'm starting to tear up. They're burger tears. Happy tears. They're definitely not your cookie cutter burger. Can't get it anywhere else.